and look at Bill Track 50 today. Uh, basically, we are a 50 state tracking service, as you know. To get started, all you need to do is come to BillTrack50.com and click the Get Started button. Um, fill in that little form, which is just your name and address, and then go through the dance to validate your email address, and you'll be sitting on a screen that says, how can we help you? So you can come and search for legislation using either this box or just clicking the bill search button and do unlimited searches for free. You can look up legislators as well for free. Um, but what we're going to be showing you is what happens if you click the free trial button. Um, that is how you can save a search. And once you save a search, there's a lot of different things you can do. So I am going to go ahead and log in on my demo account, which has a bunch of stuff on it, um, and show you what it looks like once you have um, set up some searches. So of course, I do a lot of searches on a lot of different topics. Um, so when I first log in, I see what has happened since yesterday on all my different topics. So I can see on this agriculture sheet, I had a new bill. Um, on this angel investment sheet, I had a new, I had, um, a new version of a bill. Um, and so forth. On here I have some actions. So this is just my little home screen to let me know very quickly what has happened. Um, also, if I decide to set up alerts, and I'll show you how to do that, um, I basically get emailed this grid every morning. So we process the data each evening. We check what's been added to the state websites and send you an alert around 6 a.m. Denver time. Um, so this uh, is what one of those alerts will look like. So it looks just exactly like that grid, letting you know what's happened yesterday. Um, no matter how many searches you set up, no matter how many alert boxes you click, you get just one email in the morning that looks like this. And you can click on the, e the bills right from your email, or you can click on the topic, and that will take you into Bill Track 50 to look at all of the bills. Um, so that's what the alerts are all about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop into one of these saved searches and show you how that works. Um, we call these bill sheets because they look like spreadsheets um, and they're full of bills. So I've got this one I've set up for agriculture. Um, the way you set up a search is very straightforward. It's a lot like simply Googling. Um, so you just put in some words. These are the contains all words. So I want these bills that have agriculture and pesticide in them. And then also, I want them to contain at least one of these words. So I have a few words, and then I have a number. So I can say, you know, if it mentions the statute, I'm also interested. Uh, but once you mention motor vehicles, I'm not interested. And this is in quotes because I want it to be exactly that phrase. Um, so that's how setting up a search works. It's pretty flexible. There's a number of ways you can write your searches. Um, and then there's a few other ways, things you can do to narrow down. So you can say where it is on the process. You can look at five years' worth of bills. So if you want to look at just past bills over the last five years, you can do that. Um, or you could add bills by bill number to add specifically what you want, even if it doesn't have your words, so that you can cobble together exactly the bills you want to watch. Um, also, uh, if a bill matches your words, we'll put it on your sheet. But it might match your words and it's still not interesting to you. Maybe I don't want um, these industrial hemp ones, so that I can just click the X to remove them. And in that way, I can curate this sheet and make sure it's exactly what I want. Um, any thoughts on query writing, Michael, um, or how you would use the grid itself? Are you still there, Michael? Oh, I bet you're muted again. Hey, Michael. Unmuted. Say Unmuted. something. Let me know you're there. <laughs> I'm here. Um, I mean, I think the bill sheets are pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I, I like to tell people uh, if you can use Google, you can use BillTrack50. So, you know, it's easy to use, it's easy to populate. But if you do need help, uh, either with your queries, broadening, narrowing, you're not finding what you need, uh, give, us, give us a call. Karen or I are always happy to, to help you um, find what it is that you're looking for uh, through, through some query testing and Absolutely. And my contact info and Michael's contact info are here under this contact link. So if you ever need us, we are just a click away. Uh, excellent. So let's say that I've got some bills and I've got just what I wanted. Um, if I have accidentally X'd something out that I didn't mean to, um, I can add it back with this link. Um, that'll just show me my hidden bills and I can just put them back. So that's not high pressure. Um, so you can tweak your query and go back and forth. You can X out bills. You can add bills. Um, it's all very casual. 
Um, but once you've got the bills you want, then you can say, you know what, now I need alerts. And so this is where you will say, email me if a new bill gets introduced, or email me when any of these bills moves, or anything like that, and then you'll get emailed that grid every morning on this topic. Um, so you might have a big broad topic that you're just keeping half an eye on. For that, you don't necessarily need to set up any alerts. You might have a nice narrow sheet that's exactly the 30 bills that you are watching like a hawk. For that, you might want to check every single box. Um, and then you might have topics in between. So it's quite flexible um, as far as what you're going to get emailed. And then I also have our new event schedule, which will show you when bills are coming up to be heard. And so I will show that to you when we are done with the bill sheet. Um, so once I've set that up, then I can go and I can also grab these bills to put on my website. So this is what we call our bill list widget, and it's just a list of bills in a box. So you can grab this and put it on your website. As soon as you add a bill or remove a bill or a bill gets introduced, it gets added to your widget automatically. Um, if you want, you can indicate whether you support or oppose bills. Um, and then if you want, you can turn on the position indicator. And that will highlight with red or green the bills you think are good or bad, so that maybe you're wanting to tell a group of people um, things that you know whether they think a bill whether you think a bill is good or bad. Uh, Michael, is that something that everybody can do, or are there certain nonprofits that shouldn't be showing their position? Uh, any organization can advocate on legislation, uh, for profit, nonprofit. Um, as a general rule of thumb that, that I always tell uh, organizations, issues, not people. So if you're dealing with issues, legislative issues, um, your organization is always able to take a stance. If you're dealing with political candidates, people, and races, um, then you want to steer, steer clear if you're, a, if you're a C3. But anything that's legislative oriented um, as an organization you can always take a stand on it and tell people how you feel about that um, about that bill. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so good. Then we also have another kind of widget. So the list of bills is great, especially if you're um, searching one state. Um, but if you are looking across the country, it can sometimes be useful to use our map widget instead. Um, so the map. Basically, it just brings up a look at where all of your bills are, um, and you can drop this widget on your website as well. Um, and then, when any of your members click, they get the bills uh, from that from that state specifically. You can still add a column or two or three containing your own information into this grid that comes up when they click. So you can really make this be exactly what you want it to be, showing exactly what you want it to show. Again, we keep it automatically updated, so we'll keep the last action current, we'll add bills as they come and go. Um, if you exit bill out, it comes out right away. Um, so the map is another really great way to share. Um, let me show you some examples. So one of our customers um, took the widget and swooshed it down and fit it right into this little mid middle column on their website, and so any of their members now can click on the bills and get right to the bills, which is pretty great. Um, and then we have somebody using the map. So they've just embedded this right in their website so that their members can see um, the bills that they think are important. And again, you just click, and you get the bills. And you can go back and look at another state. And so the, this is a new feature. The map is pretty new. Um, it's been pretty popular, and it seems to drive a lot of um, engagement. So Michael, who do you think the map is good for? The map is good for any organization doing uh, national state uh, state government relations. If you have bills in multiple states, uh, the map is a great tool. People who come to your website always want to know, you know, not only what your organization is doing nationally, but you know, they say all politics is local, you know, so they're they're all going to click on that state and see what issues are going on in that state, and that gives you an opportunity to to uh, get them more involved with your organization. I've been really encouraged to see how much people um, actually do click, and then once they're looking at a bill, actually maybe click on a um, sponsor and read about their representative and stuff like that. It's been very heartening to me to see how much uh, the everyday person will actually engage with legislation if they are presented with something that is relevant to them. So I think that's pretty pretty cool. Anyway, so those are two different kinds of widgets. We have a couple other ways to share, um, but these are the 
cute little ones that you could drop into your page. Um, so we keep saying that your members will be able to click on a bill, so let me show you what happens then. Um, so I'm going to just pick one of these bills. Um, so once you've got a bill that's interesting to you, um, or that one of your members clicks on, you wind up right here on this bill page, and it shows the basic information you might be expecting and where it's at. Um, the text of the bill, you can highlight your search term to more easily figure out why this bill came up for you. So somewhere down here it mentions agriculture, there we go. Um, and so that hopefully will save you time in getting where you want to go. Um, we'll show you all the different versions of the bill so that we show you the most current, but if you want to go back and look at the different amendments, you can do that. Um, you can compare two amendments to see what's different between them, and we'll highlight red and green what's changed. Um, the action history is exactly what you would expect. It's just a list of everything that's happened with the bill. Um, the vote history to show you how that's been going, and you can see um, who voted which way. And then we give you links back to the state website so that you can go to the bill page directly if you need to do more reading. Um, or you can grab the official PDF if that's what you want to share with people. Um, so hopefully that's time saving as well. Um, it's very easy to get right back to the state legislature site for that bill. Um, also, if you have some sponsors and you want to see more about them, you just click on a person and you can do this anywhere you see a person's name and wind up on that person. We'll give you whatever email we know about them. We'll give you their Twitter or their Facebook or whatever else we have run into for them. Um, other bills they've sponsored, their last 100 votes, the committees they're on, and who else is on the committee, which can be useful if you're trying to decide if a bill's going to move, um, their staff, and their bio. Um, so just the basic information organized, hopefully, in a way that's useful. Um, People who haven't been back to the site might notice a couple little improvements in here um, and a couple little improvements in here, too. Um, also, if there is a companion bill in the states where you introduce a bill in both houses at once, it'll we'll have another item down here that says companion bill, and then it'll have a link so that you know that there's another bill that goes with this one. Um, any comments about how the bills work, Michael? Um, no, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that I like about the bills uh, is that Bill Track 50 is is easy to use on your phone or your tablet. So when you're in the state house uh, doing the actual lobbying work that we do, um, it, it's easy to go with you, uh, and you can read it easily on, on a phone or a tablet. I do it all the time. Oh yeah, good call. Um, and also, when you're up here searching, you can search for a bill number or a term. Um, but we also added a legislator search, so you can also search for someone by last name, which works great on the phone. Um, and that will take you to a list of all of the legislators with that name. Um, so then you can click on the person you were looking for and get their info. So that's really nice when you're on the go. You just go to billtrack50.com on your phone, um, and then you can use that search box to find any legislator you want and real quick review their votes or review their bills or um, go to their Facebook page if that's what you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, good point, Michael. I like that. Um, okay, so that is the basics about the bill sheet, um, setting up a query, um, and the alerts, and the new alert type of the calendar. So let's go back and actually look at the calendar. If you set up a calendar, you will have a new tab on your um, home page that says event schedule. Um, so this is, this is new, um, and we're just adding in the events now. So I've got a bunch of them, so it takes a second. So we'll remind you which topic the event was for, um, so you remember what you know what search it was. Uh, obviously, the state and the bill and the bill name, what it is, where and when, and um, who's meeting, so that you can see what's going on. You can sort this by date or by state. You can filter it and look at just one state or just one bill sheet, um, et cetera, so that you can get just what you need. You can export this out to Excel. Um, if you filter it first, it'll export just what you've asked for. Um, and as I said, this is a work in progress, so we have a state coverage link to show you um, where we've got data. And as states come on and we get to see their calendars, we're grabbing that data and putting it up as soon as possible. Um, but we want to be completely transparent with you about exactly where we're at with everything. Um, so you can double check if the state you're worried about is, in fact, live yet. Um, now this, as we said, I check the date of the websites every night. So this is current as of last night. So before you actually get in your car and drive to the Capitol, you're going to want to double check that that's still happening. 
Um, and again, you can click on the bill, go to Associated Documents, and get right to the state website that way. So you're just a couple clicks from being on the official record, just to double double check. Um, Michael, this is bill hearings. Why would somebody care? Well, uh, bill hearings are are an important part of the process. And if you're if you're doing a if you're a single state organization and you're near the capital, you know it's easy to keep well easier to keep up with those schedules but if you do multi-state uh, lobbying like like I do you know having these schedules with a two-week window is is essential for for our work uh, you're able to prioritize where where you can be because as much as I've tried you know you, I can't be in more than one state on any given day uh, so that two-week window you know, to give some advance notice is great. Um, you know, anybody who does state lobbying knows that you don't go out and buy plane tickets based on that. But it's it's a great way to get some advance notice, uh, do some planning and prioritizing for for those of us that do multi-state government relations. Okay. Um, well, hopefully, people find this to be useful. And again, you decide topic by topic if this belongs on your calendar. So if you've got a big broad topic um, where you don't want it all cluttered, you know, you don't want all those bills on there cluttering up your schedule, don't click the event schedule box. Um, if you have a, you know, a topic where you really are interested and you want to know when the hearings are coming up, click the box. Um, and that, that way the calendar will be just what you actually need to know. Um, okay, so that is the new event schedule. Uh, we've also got other ways to share, like our stakeholder pages, which is just a way to share the entire grid. So if the little widget isn't enough, if you want to add um, additional information to it or you would like to have all of those columns, um, you get to pick exactly what you share, and it can be your own columns where you've written comments, um, or you can hide your comments. Um, and it could be any of the columns that you think are relevant to your members. So you set up how you want this to look, and then we keep it current all the time. Um, you can keep this private so that people need a password to see it, um, or you can click the public button on the Manage tab, which will make it public. And then you can either share a link or you can embed it in your site. Um, so I've got some examples. Um, the North Dakota Chamber, they have decided to share the whole grid instead of just a widget. Um, they put the bills in categories, so they're sharing those um, as well as their uh, position and they've decided that these are the columns they want their members to be able to see um, and then of course we keep this updated which actually isn't that hard in North Dakota right now um, you can also if you want if you don't want to embed it you can just have a link to it and then we'll host it so um, from the Quad Cities Chamber they say hey if you want to see the bills are monitoring click here um, and then that brings up their page. They've got their logo. It doesn't have any Bill Track 50 stuff on it. Um, and then people can still go click. Um, and they've chosen different columns that they want to share with their members. Um, so you can either stick it right on your website or just have a link. If you want to use the link, you can also put that in a blog post very easily. You can tweet it. You can put it in a newsletter. Um, and then people can click and see the whole bunch of bills um, along with any comments that you've chosen to share. Um, so that's pretty straightforward, um, and you can share whatever information you that way. We also have um, scorecards. So if you tell us whether you support or oppose a bill, we can take, um, let's see, here's an example. Um, you pick a handful of bills, and you say whether you support or oppose them, and we'll add together everybody's vote and say who's with you and against you um, based on, you know, your opinion about the bills. So this is a handful of bills um, about green topics that I picked. Um, and I said whether they were good or bad from the green point of view. Um, so this is a five. It was a great bill. This is a minus two. It wasn't as good, um, et cetera. Uh, once you've set that up, and it's very easy, we'll either default it based on your support or oppose information, um, or you can tweak it to be even more fine-tuned. Um, then we add together everybody's score and show you who's with you and who's against you. Um, or more importantly, who's mostly with you and maybe could be more with you if they just understood your topics better. Um, so maybe you should reach out to them. Um, we'll also show you party uh, with you and against you. Um, we'll show you geographically. Um, I did a gambling one the other day in New Jersey and it had a definite um, Atlantic City kind of location bias. 
so you can also see, you know, district by district who's with you and against you. Um, if you do a careful job with this, you're also, you can put bills into categories. Um, so I have a client who's done a great job with that. Um, so they've decided to embed the scorecard right on their website. Um, again, you can keep it private so that only certain people can see it. Um, or you can embed it right on your website. Um, or you can use that link. So you can also make a link just like you did for the scorecard and share that, tweet that, put it in a newsletter, whatever. Um, anyway, they put things into categories. So they've got their different categories. Um, so people can pick the topic that they care about the most and see how the legislators break down in that category, which is pretty cool. Um, further, if they, if one of your members clicks on a legislator, like wants to look at their legislator, um, their representative, then it'll break down and show how they are, how they've done in every category according to you and according to what you think about the bills, um, as well as show all of their individual votes on every bill, what you thought they should vote and how they did vote. Um, so people can actually dive as deep as they want to um, with this scorecard. So it's got nice uh, basic information, you know, the big high-level summary, but you can drill down um, and see as much as you want. And again, we've got um, this is a free market think tank, um, so their parties uh, shake out differently. Um, yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, and Michael, is there a concern more with the scorecard than there was the widget as far as what kinds of organizations can share this information? Um, no, you're you're still dealing with with legislation, so anybody can. Uh, share this kind of information and, and I think it's a, a very powerful advocacy tool uh, a lot of uh, a lot of organizations you know leverage this in their advocacy work uh, I don't think there's uh, scarier words for a legislator to hear than you know my organization <laughs> is scoring this bill you know which lets them know that you know there's people across the, their district or across the state or, you know, looking at how they're voting on that particular issue. Um, well, that said, uh, scorecards don't only have to be an, an external tool. Uh, I, I know a lot of people can use them with, uh, with their, to evaluate their grassroots or their, or their PAC work uh, and show internally, you know, the effectiveness of their grassroots efforts. Uh, you know, how people are voting on issues where they took uh, a particular stand or how candidates that they've supported are are also supporting issues that they support so it's a a great piece to inform internally um, if you're a, if you're a corporation uh, you're kind of grassroots in your pack and uh, advocacy work to uh, to your higher ups to your you know your c-level executives or to uh, the general company at large yeah, you can also just inform yourself. So they're incredibly easy to create. You just pick your topic, pick the state, and it makes it for you. Um, if you have set up whether you support or oppose, it's got everything filled in, and you can see right away what's going on. Um, so you can just take a quick look at a state um, and then delete the scorecard. So it's it's a great tool for just kind of keeping an eye on everything um, and, and very fast to make. So yeah, so you can inform just a small group of people or even just yourself. Um, if you just need a quick snapshot of how it's going and where somebody sits compared to their peers um, that you're about to meet with. So, um, finally, uh, regulation tracking. So, bill tracking is much nicer. Regulation tracking is much more terrible, um, <laughs> if that's fair to say. Um, but it works the same way. So, you just put in some search terms. Um, so, for example, this one I did Dodd-Frank, I think. Dodd-Frank, um, or Dodd-Frank, and then I said, go ahead and email me if, um, so you could say, give me an email when a new regulation is proposed mentioning my, my topic, um, and then we give you links to everywhere where um, it's mentioned, federal or state. Um, if you want, we don't have quite all of the states, so um, if you go up here and go to regulations, We've got a little map for you. So the red states are where we do have coverage and the white states are where we don't. Um, we are just finishing up Nebraska now. That should be up in a week or two. And then Georgia is nearly done as well. So we're adding these. We hope to be nearly done by um, the middle of the year. So it's as you see, we have almost all the states, but there's a few still left. 
Um, so hopefully uh, we're covering the states that you're interested in. So that's regulations. You will get a separate email. So the bills come in one email. If you set up regulation alerts, you get a second email with your regulation alerts. Um, all right, so that is regulations. Very simple. Um, if a bear to interpret and decide if, they're, if they matter. Um, the last point I would like to remind everybody of, especially if you're coming back to this over this from over the summer, um, your account menu is where you go to manage who is allowed to see your bill sheets. So that is where you manage users. Um, all accounts come with unlimited users, um, so you can invite anyone you want, but you might, as an organization, want to double check um, and make sure everybody is still current um, and still has the permissions they're supposed to have um, now that it's game time again. So you just edit. When you invite somebody, all you have to tell me is their email address and name, and then we will email them and say, congratulations, an account has been created for you. Um, and then they set up their own password. Um, but once you've got somebody added, then you'd say topic by topic what they should be allowed to see. Um, or you can just give them permission to see everything by making them an administrator. Um, so you decide if they should be allowed to view it, if they should be allowed to edit it. Um, so you have really good control over what people can do. Um, or you can just delete the user altogether. So I would recommend that now that it's uh, the you know the year has started and the states are in session, go ahead and review your users again and make sure everybody is how they want to be. Um, and then if you need to add new users, that's easy enough. Just click the Add User button and um, put in their name and email address, and you're good to go. Um, so that is that is that. Uh, that is what I wanted to show you and remind you how to do. Uh, any questions about any of the new stuff or how to set things up? Anything I can help with? I've got a question. Hello. I have experienced an issue where the event schedule tab or option appears on some accounts but not others. Ah, right. Good question. So when you invite people, it is up to them to say what alerts they want. So you can invite somebody and they can set up their own emails. Um, in fact, they have to because we're not going to let you spam people, so they have to go ask for the emails. Um, but they also have to check the box to say that they want those bills on their schedule. So each person decides what should go on their schedule. So whoever it is that doesn't have the events, if they want them, they need to go to that bill sheet, go to alerts, and turn them on. Um, so each person is kind of fine-tuning it to be just what they want it to be. which is also a good point about alerts. Since you're allowed to invite anybody, um, if you have members that are going to want alerts or like board members or somebody else that would like to get the daily email, um, you're welcome to add them, um, give them view capability, and then they can set up the alerts at whatever level they want, um, and then they'll get them every day as well. Good question. Thank you. Anybody else, as you're getting started again, need any other reminders? Excellent. Oh, Michael, wait, one more. Yeah. Uh, one more, just to be clear. That was for Jennifer again. Just to be clear, the event schedule tab will appear once you've selected the alerts. Exactly. If you don't have any turned on, you don't even get the tab. So it won't show up until the first time you click that box. That way we don't confuse people who don't want it. <laughs> So, Michael, anything that you would like to mention that I didn't show off? Uh, I think we covered everything. Just remember, if if you need any help, feel free to reach out to to Karen or or myself. We're always happy to to help whenever you need us. I'm Karen, and Michael is Michael at Legend Nation. So, um, if you need help writing queries, Michael's your best bet. Help with the website. Absolutely, drop me a note. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for making time to um, spend half an hour with us. Hopefully this was helpful, knocked a bit of the rust off, and you're ready to go and keep your legislators accountable. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.